In this video we're going to talk about another econometric method, instrumental variables. We're going to be using as an example a paper by Edward Miguel and co-authors about um, economic shocks and civil conflict in Africa. Basically, we want to know how do shocks that affect the economy impact the probability of civil conflict in Africa. Thus, we want to know how shocks that uh, make the economy grow um, slower or faster affect the probability of um, conflict for an African country in a given year. And uh, for that, we use uh, the simple economic growth and uh, a dummy variable, an indicator that is one for a country when that country has a, uh, a war or a conflict uh, in, during that year or zero if there is peace. Now, if we wanted to evaluate uh, how economic growth affects um, uh, the chances of war, we might want to, um, we might be tempted to just regress economic growth in war and uh, see what this coefficient is. But if we were to do this, um, we would run into a couple of problems that would basically basically make this estimate um, a wrong estimate. The first problem is uh, reverse causality, or how is usually known uh, endogeneity. This basically means that uh, the causality um, channel is not going from economic growth to war, but instead is going from conflict to economic growth. That is, in years where a country suffers a war, uh, economic growth uh, decreases, uh, which is very possible. That means that there's a um, reverse feedback that um, would, not, would not allow us to um, establish causality. Um, the second problem with this simple regression is the omitted variable bias. There is a big chance that there is something else that is both affecting economic growth and the probability of conflict at the same time, simultaneously. And that thing is usually something that we cannot observe. For example, we can think of uh, a country having bad institutions. And those institutions create uh, slow growth and at the same time generate instability in the country, which leads to war. This bias, this omitted variable bias, will produce estimates of, uh, of um, this coefficient when just running this regression that are not uh, close to the true one. Now, the authors find a way to solve this problem. They basically use a technique known as instrumental variables. And the basic intuition is as follows. Maybe we can use an exogenous variable, uh, for example, rainfall, um, to proxy economic growth. We can collect data on rainfall variability just by looking at uh, yearly rainfall growth rates. The basic idea here is that in years where uh, rainfall uh, changes a lot, when uh, there is a drought, there is no rainfall at all, or there's a lot of rainfall, there's flooding. Since most of Africa lives out of agriculture, this will have a big effect on economic growth slowing it down. And also, since there is no possibility for small um, agricultural societies, such as country Africa, to uh, affect their climate directly, we can think of rainfall patterns as being something exogenous, like a natural experiment. So basically, the uh, causality argument that we uh, are establishing here and that we borrow from the paper is that um, basically draw um, or 
rainfall variability changes um, um, affect the economy, um, slowing down growth, and then when growth slows down, this um, leads to more violence, thus more civil conflict in Africa. This uh, first relationship, um, we're going to call it the first stage relationship, and uh, we're going to study it in more detail later. It's basically how drought affects economic growth in uh, um, Africa's agricultural society. And then we will study um, the second stage, which is how does economic growth affect uh, the probability of conflict which is what we um, wanted to know to begin with. So this second stage is really the important question that we are asking. And we are just using this exogenous variable here as a tool to proxy economic growth.